It certainly was. How was uh, how was life as Lord? It's extraordinary. Your story, I must say, I'm delighted, Bertie O'Hearn, if someone's just tuned in, uh, the life and times of Bertie O'Hearn. It's an extraordinary story. Not really rags riches become you came from a very loving home, but you weren't living in Kalini in a mansion when you were a child. And, and here you are. This rise to, to fame is fantastic for you. Uh, not fame is probably a wrong way to describe it, but your rise in your own ambition to fulfill. Uh, then we saw you as Lord Mayor in 1980. You were voted into office there. How was that? Jeez, what's the mansion house like inside? Uh, mansion house is a lovely place. So yeah. An old building and it, thankfully in more recent years they've done a lot of renovations to, to modernise it. It was an old building that's kind of been there from the 18th century and um, it, it was a great place of course to, to be based because you're in the heart of the city. And But the Lord Mayor is, is, is a, you know, while it's kind of an honorary uh, position it, it, it's, uh, you don't have executive powers but you're, you're involved in everything in the city for the year and the Lord Mayor is kind of ex officio on about everything I use this um, very much to get out and about to meet people to go to things to support things whether they be charity or culture or the arts and you know it, it's not a big political office Lord Mayor you, don't, you need to be politically to, to get into it but it's um, it was a great way of being out there with hospitals and institutions and uh, I, I worked I worked extremely hard for the year and, and I used it that way because at the time I was um, in my early 30s and it was it was good to just be able to do that but I had a fascinating year and I really loved it ah, but you were also holding on a few jobs you were fi- you were Fianna Fáil spokesman for Labour and public services at the same time and I think uh, maybe I'm wrong at this but I think you were still working in the Matter Hospital I was well at that stage not too, too much but I was doing it I was part time in the, in the Matter Hospital but during that year I, I, I don't think I, I did too much for it no but, but it, it certainly it, I was a spokesperson for Labour and public service and you know that made it busy in the Dáil and made it busy as Lord Mayor now I, 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 that year I kind of had to just be involved in the Dáil on my own briefs but it, it was um, one one heck of a year and it was, it was one of those years where I think I started about you know half six every morning and finished up at half eleven and you know at the end of the year I, I remember it well I, I was wrecked and I was I was quite happy to leave the mansion house I, I, I had no regrets saying could I stay another week I was I was really battered at the end of it but I put everything into it and I, I really did enjoy it Your marriage was falling apart at the time you you did say also because as a politician in Ireland anyway the, the old pay wasn't great and that's why you were holding down the matter job as well the matter did approach you at that point and wanted to make you almost chief accountant for it offering you twice or three times what you're earning then and you at this in hindsight you think if you'd taken that job your marriage would have survived but politics was in your blood yeah politics was in the blood and you know it was one of those things in life Mars, where you make a call and you're never quite sure even to today which <laughs> did I call it right but you know I've had an interest in life but I could have called it different that time and I certainly I think would have been a far wealthier person maybe maybe it would or wouldn't have been a far happier person it, it's just it's just hard to know but it, it was one of those crossroads um, and they were divergent it was going one way or the other way there was not a bit of both mm. and uh, yeah, you had to call it and um, I was what 29 I think or 30 when I had Very to make young. that call and I, I called it the way I did and that's where I ended up. <laughs> but but you're out of your marriage, of course, you got two magnificent daughters, which we'll talk about in a moment, who are very successful in their own ways, and, and it's a fantastic uh, result for you and your ex-wife. But just going back to politics, that's what people want to hear about today. You, you described 1990 as a terrible year. Yeah, in 1990 was the year of the presidential election, and um, I was the director of elections for Brian Lennon. Um, it, it was also the year my father died. Um, I was very close to both my dad and mum, so it, it was one of the, one of those years that was really roller coaster for me. And as the director of elections for Brian Lennon, you know, for most of the year it looked as if we had the election um, won, and we were rolling down all the way to the Oris, and uh, you know, it, it seemed as if we couldn't be beaten most of the time and then with about 10 days out was this interview where um, Brian Lennon was quite frankly set up <laughs> and um, the answer he gave because he had been ill he, he didn't recall the events and it was this tape recording which he gave an explanation of events that had happened to do with um, the fall of the government back in 19 um, in the early 1980s and he gave one version of events um, on the t- uh, on, on the recording that was done with a with a student, uh, and he gave another version on the TV program, 
and um, it was all about did, did he contact the president to try to um, get the president to, to call an election or not to call an election and of course it turned into a huge story and um, it did him huge damage and uh, we ultimately cost him the, uh, the presidential did, he, election of I, 1990. I think I'm right in saying Charlie Hall, he asked him the question and he denied it. He said no I didn't call him in the end it found out that in fact uh, he did and of course in the election it was a bad year for you. You were rang with Hawhey at this stage. You stood up for yourself to Charlie. Charlie was a, was a, I'm not saying a bully of a man but he certainly was a very charismatic human being that could scare a few people. I, my late mum ran for Fianna Fáil in Dundee, and I remember Charlie often and Maureen being around in the house and uh, quite a character that he was. Uh, and uh, this, uh, he was beginning to lose his footing at the same time. So you're you're having an awful time altogether. Uh, and uh, I think at the end, it's sort of all this sort of stuff that was going on brought Charlie down. Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, Charlie had a bit of a roller coaster career. He, he did great things and you know, he, he was a great minister, but uh, ultimately, I, I think he, you know, he, he, he was in, in trouble more often than not. And I, I think that, unfortunately, uh, ended, ended, ended his, his political career. Did you, did you feel that down by him at all, Bertie? Ah, you know, I mean, I was very annoyed at the time when it came out that he, whether it was eight and a half million or something that he had got from benefactors of the party. I mean, there weren't, there weren't even people who were politically close to him. They weren't friends. And, um, you know, I think that, that created a lot of problems for the party. And I had to dig ourselves out of that in the mid-90s. And, you know, we, we had a, a difficult period be- between the, the, the collapse of the Fianna Fáil um, government at that time, uh, when Albert Reynolds was teaching. And at the same time, um, it came out about Charlie Hockey. And uh, so th- there, were, there were two. Uh, one, we were trying to build ourselves up after the, the fallout of government. And, and then the other thing was to deal with the, the Hockey thing. And it made life fairly tough for the generation of guys that, that were with me in the mid-90s. Well, of course, you uh, became the youngest Prime Minister. That's been a, a great day for you, the youngest Prime Minister, the Taoiseach Ireland, I think, ever uh, in history. Uh, and yes, yeah, that, that, I mean, it was, a, it was a terrific occasion. And what a day that must have been when you returned to the Doyle. Fantastic, no? Well, I think the nice thing about it was that uh, that first day when you're elected is great. Everyone is with you. You've made no decision, so they don't turn on you till the following day. <laughs> but did you enjoy I mean, I must ask you, sorry for keeping you so long, but it's such a, a wonderful thing to have you here and let the Irish hear you down here, Bertie. I hope that you're, you're not annoyed with me for keeping not you too at all, long. Not at all. Um, what was it like as a Taoiseach, as a Prime Minister, all this flying dinner party? It looks very glamorous. I mean, there's a little piece in the book, which I quite like, is you were flying to China, I think, and, and the plane stopped in Siberia and you were having a little bit of a snooze when they said uh, listen Taoiseach you better wake up there's a few people here who want to meet you yeah this was a, a fueling stop um, in Siberia and it was a place called Nova Sabrisk and um, anyone that's ever gone that uh, direction would have stopped and particularly in the smaller aircraft and you know, we, we got out and uh, here they had the bands and they had the red carpet and the mayor and the senior politicians were out and the TV cameras. And, um, you know, we weren't meant to meet anybody, but, you know, straight away you pulled yourself together. It was the middle of the night or maybe I think about five, half five in the morning, uh, local time there. And, um, you know, we were, we're out and, and, and they have a huge banquet for us and they vodka that hour in the morning, which none of my people were all asleep and they, they could hardly get their eyes open. And of course, it was a trick of the local governor and the local mayor that when anyone was going through, um, they made it seem on their local TV that, that this was uh, people coming to see them. And um, he asked me, when I say a few words in their local TV station about their talks and that we were talking about investment. And <laughs> it, it was uh, it was so funny, I can tell you. It was, um, apparently, I found out afterwards that this was a regular thing with them. 